Now we will be talking a little bit about what to bring, what not to bring, and what we consider contraband. And let's preface this by saying you don't have to go off and break the bank. So what to bring and what not to bring. Campers are not permitted to bring clothing that would be pants, sweaters, socks, underwear that are primarily synthetic material. So rayon, nylon, polyester. The reason why is because we are dealing with fire. We are around fire a lot because that's where we cook. We cook over fires. And synthetic material doesn't burn so much as it will melt. And for safety reasons, it is safer to wear natural materials. The rule of thumb is you want it to be at least 50% cotton. Other things that are contraband or are prohibited are fireworks, firearms, food, candy, drinks, alcohol, tobacco of any kind, prescription or over-the-counter drugs. They may bring them, but they are not allowed to hold they're not allowed to keep them. Any electronic items and aerosols. So, electronics, getting back to being unplugged. They may bring a flashlight so long as it does not have a strobe function because we don't need people having raves at 12 o'clock midnight and also it's a good idea to have a flashlight that is number one cheap number two isn't that bright 50 to 100 200 lumens that's really all you need Anything brighter than that, and it can be distracting. It can actually take away from the experience of other people. So it doesn't need to have like a million lumens. No spotlights, just a small flashlight. Just enough to see the path in front of them. Now you might be wondering, well, what do I mean that it will take away from the experience from other people? Well... It's been our experience that people don't, campers and even adults at times, don't realize that you can see as a human, you can see in the dark, but your eyes have to adjust. So the brighter the light that you have, the longer it's going to take for your eyes to adjust and the harder it's going to be able to see stuff in front of you. Me personally, I have a flashlight, but... Nine times out of ten, I don't even need it. We are normally very lucky with this, with the moon. It's normally a full moon during camp. And then on top of that, a lot of camp is sand. It's white sand. So it really doesn't get all that dark at our campsite. So you should be able to see it. You should be able to see stuff. And then aerosols, the reason we don't want cans of aerosols, so like uh, aerosol bug spray or um, deodorant, sunscreen, the reason for that is because an aerosol can will become a flamethrower very easily, and we don't need them to be tempted to do such a thing. So leave the aerosol stuff at home. Basically, you'll know it's an aerosol can if you can press the top and it keeps spraying until you release the button. What you want is a squirt top. So every time you press, it lets a little bit of liquid out instead of letting out a mist or a foam. So no aerosols. Prescription drugs, we'll talk more about at check-in, but the gist of it is all drugs, whether they are prescription or whether they are over-the-counter, will be taken by the staff and then it will be doled out as prescribed or as directed. Things which are optional, you don't have to do it, but some campers kind of insist upon it. 
So first of all, they are allowed to bring period-appropriate bladed tools, such as knives and tomahawks. They are not allowed to bring machetes, swords, or anything like that. If they want to bring a pocket knife, that's fine. If they want to bring a tomahawk, that's fine. If they wanted to bring a hatchet or an axe, that's fine. Um, but wooden handles are typically what we want to try to stay near, stay steer toward, because that is more period appropriate. A metal handled, you know, um, hatchet isn't really period appropriate. And of course, this is given your permission. And when we talk about the store, we'll talk more about permission um, for bladed tools and weapons. They may also bring colonial style clothing. There are a few places that you can go to to buy colonial clothing. It is rather expensive. So don't feel that you have to purchase it, but there are places out there. So Jazz Townsend is one. They have costume stuff, which is made to look, period, but it's not actually that period. So like the waistcoat it doesn't have any pockets. The pants more than likely wouldn't have any pockets. Um, and then there's actual clothing that, that would have pockets. It's like that's got actual functioning pockets and that has actual functioning pockets. Um, but that's, you know, it's up to you. And then, so there's Jazz Towns, and, and then there's also Samson Historical. Well, Samson Historical, there we go. Add an extra, added an extra P. So here's just, you know, just kind of give you an idea of the prices. Um, all their stuff is going to be really good quality. It's going to be made very well. But again, you know, it's expensive. So don't, don't feel like you have to go out and purchase this stuff. Coming back to summer camp. Colonial clothing is fine. If you're a reenactor and you have it, you can bring it, but you don't have to. And then the last thing, which is optional, and we're perfectly fine with them bringing it, would be instruments that are appropriate to the period. So... What would those instruments be? Well, most of your traditional band instruments, except for the tuba, the baritone euphonium, the trumpet, although if you want to bring a trumpet, that's fine, uh, the saxophone, those are all modern instruments. The trumpet, you can make a case for. The French horn is fine. They did have them back then, but they didn't have them like how we do today. Most of your woodwind instruments like your flute, your piccolo, your clarinet, your oboe, bassoon, those are colonial instruments. They are period accurate for the most part. Uh, other things like a fife, a drum, uh, violin, viola, most of almost all your string instruments are going to be period correct. Uh, and then recorders are also period correct. Tin whistles, jaw harp, dulcimer, bagpipes, right? Those are all period correct. So if they want to bring them, they can. Why would they bring them, you're asking yourself? Well, because of the talent show. They are more than welcome to bring these instruments and then use them during the talent show. There's not really going to be much other time for it. But, you know, if we had enough people come and enough people with instruments brought them, you know, we could get together and we could play some music. Because uh, most of the staff 
at Camp Flint like we are musically inclined. So things that would be collected at check-in. Again, medications. It doesn't matter if it's prescription or if it's over-the-counter. The staff will be handling medications. We do ask that they are packaged in their original container they have the prescription label attached, and it also needs to have their name on it, preferably on the bottle. But if it's not on the bottle, you know, we can put it in a Ziploc bag and put their name on the bag. But it would be better if we could put their name physically on the bottle itself in case it gets separated. Camper money. So we recommend that campers bring thirty to a hundred dollars now this is completely up to you what you want them to bring what you want them to spend what we recommend as far as the amount go to the store so up here at the top again you know we have the link to the store go to the store poke around and then make a list you know we're gonna get your little brother this. We're gonna get your sister this. We're gonna get aunt so-and-so one of these. Dad wants one of these. Mom wants one of those. That way you can make a budget, you can make a plan, and it's a good life skill to have. Budgeting always is a good thing. So we recommend that you do that. There might be a few things that we have in our store at camp that's not necessarily on the website just because they're either limited stock or it's the last of it, so we took it down off the website. So if you want to add a little bit of wiggle room in your budget, you know, that's fine. But again, what they spend, how much they spend, and what it, uh, whatever they're spending it on is up to you, between you and your camper. But uh, what will happen is when you get there, we will collect your camper camper's money, it will go into our cash box. The amount will be written in a ledger, and then we will keep track of their purchases as they go to the store. So once they get done with that, then you know they, they're obviously they can't spend any more. But if there's any uh, money left over at the end when you come to pick them up. That money will be issued back to you guys in cash. And then musical instruments, if you have them, if they bring them, we'll collect them. So that way we can keep them safe, put them in a place they're not going to get stepped on or, you know, someone roll over and then smoosh a violin. So we will collect musical instruments. Okay. So let's look at the packing list. What do your campers need to bring? So for starters, I just want to point out that old and used, cheap, is fine. You don't have to get out there and break the bank buying all new, cl all new clothes, like a whole bunch of pants and a whole new set of shoes because there's no need to. You don't have to. A lot of this stuff can come from Goodwill, Salvation Army, thrift stores, and it will work just fine. So we encourage you, you know, to save yourself the expense of having to go out and buying all this stuff brand new. For starters, what are you going to put your stuff in? Well, you're probably not going to come across any colonial luggage, like a portmanteau, um, but it is easy enough to simply use a pillowcase and it's going to need to be a big pillowcase. So like a king size pillowcase, uh, what you can do, you, we recommend three pillowcases, one to put your stuff in, one that will be stuffed and used as an actual pillow, and then a third one for your dirty clothes. So that way they can be kept separate from your clean stuff. Beyond that, I would recommend a couple of modern things. First of all, I would organize your stuff in Ziploc bags. So like your socks and your underwear go in one bag, your t-shirts 
will go in another bag. Your toiletries in another bag. And what this will do is if, by chance, it rains, being in that bag, it's going to stay dry. It's also going to stay organized. Now, let's say that you have a laundry bag. Laundry bags are really cool. I use them, me personally, for doing colonial camping from time to time. And so long as it's a solid material, not a mesh, solid material is fine. It doesn't have to be cotton because it's not going to be around a fire, so it really won't matter much. But laundry bags are normally big. They're a solid color. They have a drawstring at the top, and they will fit most of your stuff in there. Sometimes when campers arrive, they have a lot of stuff, and the way that they've packed it, they actually have to use all three of their bags, all three of their uh, pillowcases to pack their stuff in. So you do want to bring a pillowcase to make sure that you have something to turn into a pillow. But if you want to just use a laundry bag, that's fine. So a pillow for a pillowcase is great. And then maybe another pillow for dirty clothes just so they can be separated. That's fine too. You don't want to put your dirty clothes in something plastic. You want them to be able to breathe. Because if you put them in a plastic bag, they're not going to breathe. And when you open it next time, it's going to be pretty rank. All right, so... Uh, cloth bag is good. Lastly, one other recommendation that I will make uh, a good idea would be to bring a trash bag. So you can, if it's going to rain, take that trash bag, take all your other stuff, put it in the trash bag, and then put that in your um, laundry bag. Or put everything with the laundry bag in the trash bag. Either way. That way, it'll help to waterproof your bag. So, as far as the clothing goes and the colors of everything, we want it to be simple, usually muted tones. Um, you know, they, they wouldn't have run around in like rainbow stripes. Um, you know, they wouldn't have had something that was magenta or fuchsia. You know, we wouldn't be wearing... Uh, safety yellow or lime green or anything like that. So we want to try to keep it aesthetically in a a dull kind of earth tony stuff. White is fine. White was actually quite common back then. So if they have white pants, khaki pants, navy blue, green, gray, that's fine. Same thing with towels. Your towels don't have to be white. Um, but we don't necessarily, you know, want to roll up with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle towels. So, try to keep it that way. And then, the last thing before we get into our list is you want to label it. Label everything with a permanent marker. So, your shirt, on the inside, collar, put your name. Your socks, you know, on the inside cuff, write your name on both of them. Not just the one pair, but on both of them. You know, on your towel, you can put your name either directly on the towel or you can put it on the tag. So label all your stuff. That way it doesn't get confused and mixed up and then lost turns into stolen, turns into hurt feelings. So what do we need? Well... First of all, you're going to want a sheet, and this is something that you can lie on, um, but you can also use it to cover up with. A twin or regular size sheet is plenty big enough. You can lay on one half and then throw the other half over top of you. It's not going to be very cold, but it does get kind of cool in the mornings, about 3 o'clock. The pillowcases, again, they're there. Your bath towel, you're only going to need like one, one of those, and we will... If it does rain, we'll make sure to get everybody to pull their towels down so it doesn't get rained on too much. So that way you can use it. Because if it's soaking wet, you know, you're not going to be able to use it. We do have a dryer and laundry facilities. They're not at our camp. 
uh, but at our office. So if we do have to dry stuff, that's not that big of a deal. And if you have a laundry bag, hey, put it in the laundry bag, we can throw it in the dryer, and your stuff doesn't get mixed up. Washcloths, if you use washcloths, um, you can bring them. If not, not everybody uses them. That's fine. A bar of soap. Now, why a bar? Well, people who aren't used to bathing themselves from a small container might use the whole container if they show up with a tiny little um, travel size soap. They might use the whole thing in one setting. If they use the whole thing in one setting, we'll have to get them soap to use, which is fine. We, we can do that. We do carry extra stuff just in case. But a bar of soap is not going to be used in one setting. So that's why we recommend a bar of soap. And you put it in the Ziploc bag so when it's sudsy and wet, it doesn't transfer onto other stuff. Shampoo, conditioner, again, it's really kind of up to you. For the ladies, they're probably going to want to have shampoo. Uh, for the guys, unless they have long hair, it doesn't, it's not going to, their hair is not going to get that grody. A brush and a comb, optional. Hair bands, berets, optional, or barrettes are optional. Uh, feminine products as needed. Toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, again, non-aerosol deodorant. Flashlight, extra batteries, always a good thing to have. Again, make sure the flashlight is not terribly bright. 50 to like 200 lumens is all you need. And then no strobe function. Red light function is great, but please, no strobe function. Sunscreen, again, optional. If your kid burns re real easily, you probably are going to want to send some sunscreen with them. If not, we do have sunscreen with us. A pocket-sized rain poncho. So, this is not so much you have to have it so much as it's recommended. Um, it's a good idea to have it. And they're fairly cheap. But if you want to buy a poncho that is a bit more on the expensive side, that's fine. But just one pocket-sized poncho, they're like 99 cents or a dollar from the Dollar Tree. Uh, a handkerchief. Again, it's optional. You don't really need one. But if you need to wipe your face off, you need to blow your nose, something like that, it can come in handy. A small stuffed animal, if desired, your child may bring one of those. And then this right here, a Bible. We get questions about this quite often. Why do we need a Bible? Well, Camp Flintlock is not a religious camp. We are not affiliated with any denomination, religion, or even church. So, why do we say to bring a Bible? Well, back during colonial times, pretty much everybody was Christian, at least in the United States. And if they weren't Christian, they believed more than likely in some kind of Judeo-Christian faith. And that includes a lot of the Native Americans. Many of them did uh, convert over to Christianity. So the Bible, we use that in the morning circles for our proverb discussion. So each morning we get together, we talk about one of the proverbs in the book of Proverbs, and we discuss, you know, what does it mean to us and how can we better fulfill that proverb, such as, you know, how can we be a good friend? How does having good friends make us better people? Things like that. Spending money, we already talked about. Stamps, stationery, and pencils in a Ziploc bag. Really kind of depends on your session, if it's a full week or if it's a half week. If they want to mail a letter, they're more than welcome. We will put it in the mailbox, and it'll probably get home before they do. So if they want to write themselves in the future, or if they want to write home and, you know, get it the following week, that's that's fine. 
So if they want to bring that, that's great. If they like to draw, they can draw. If they want to read, they can bring a book. Um, just, you know, no electronics. And then medications. Any medications that they might need or want. This says an eight-day supply. That's for a whole week. If we're only doing a half week, you know, just cut that in half. And on that note, all of this stuff here is done up for a whole week. So you can really cut, you know, the clothing in half, which is clothing is down here. If there's something particular you want your child to take, like let's say uh, you you don't give your child Tylenol for whatever reason. You only want them to take a leave. We do carry that. Most over-the-counter drugs we will have, but if you're like, we have, here's the child to leave, this is what we want them to take, then bring it. That's fine. So clothing. As I said before, you are more than welcome to spend money and purchase colonial clothing. Again, you don't have to. Normally, what most of our campers do is, for the ladies, we issue them clothing. And the guys, we issue the guys' clothing as well, but they get a shirt. The ladies' clothing is a bit more involved. So ladies will get a petticoat, which is the skirt. They will get a shift, which is like a nightgown in a way. But you would wear your nightgown all the time. And they will get a clean one. Whenever we shower, they'll get a clean shift and a clean petticoat. And they'll get a pinafore, which is basically an apron. And then some ladies, if they want, uh, will get a bodice, which is kind of like a vest. Boys are issued a colonial-style shirt. And then they are expected to bring their own pants. All campers will receive a bandana or kerchief that will correspond to their team. We have a green team and we have a blue team. And everybody will have that bandana that they can either wear on their head or they can wear it uh, around their arm. We do recommend all campers, especially the ladies, they put their hair up and they wear the bandana over their hair, especially when they're working in the kitchen because hair is extremely flammable and we don't need it swinging into the fire. As far as the rest of the clothing goes, they will need to bring their own shoes and undergarments. If they want to wear a mask that is between you and your camper, we are not enforcing uh, any sort of mask restrictions, so the rest of camp will not be masked. And, but if you want yours to be masked, or if they want to be masked themselves, that's up to them. We, at this point, do not recommend it because there is a risk of heat exhaustion and we don't want people passing out. So again, the general rule of thumb is we want most of our clothing to be at least 50% cotton. We do not want synthetics because they are easily damaged by sparks from our fires, in addition to the danger that they do melt. So, clothing. Socks. For the boys, normal socks are fine. Uh, for the girls, knee highs, knee high socks are better because the ladies will not be wearing pants, they'll be wearing skirts. Wool socks are optional. If you want to bring them, that's fine. They're good to sleep in, but, I mean, unless you're used to wearing wool socks, it's really optional. Uh, underwear, however, they do whatever they normally would do. Um, again, we do want to try to keep stuff cotton. So boxers, briefs, right, those type of underwear we want to try to make sure that it is cotton or at least 50% cotton. Shoes. Now shoes can get expensive, but all we need are just plain, well-fitting, closed-toed shoes 
preferably made out of leather. So they can be boots. I would not recommend dress shoes. Dress shoes are made to look good. They are not comfortable. And we are going to be on our feet pretty much the entire time. So please do not send dress shoes. Boots are fine. Flats are fine. If you don't have those, any shoe will work. Uh, we don't want anything made out of rubber or plastic. So like no Crocs or Quarks or anything of that brand of or type of shoe, kind of shoe. Sandals, we're not going to be needing sandals because they're not closed-toed. Uh, mules, they're closed-toed, but they're not closed around the back. We don't really want those unless they're going to wear them for slippers. And then leather is best if you have them. And just as a reminder, we want to make sure that the shoes fit well and that they are broken in. Please do not come to camp wearing a pair of shoes that you just bought because that is a recipe for blisters and it's not a pleasant experience. For the gentlemen, we need long pants. We do not wear shorts. They need to be, again, at least 50% cotton. So dickies are out of the question. But if all you have are jeans, while we don't really want jeans, if it's all you have, that's perfectly acceptable. Jeans, denim jeans, are typically more cotton than anything else. And while it wasn't technically invented in the 18th century, that's fine. Um, the color, you know, solid, a muted color. So if you want to do black, but that'd be kind of hot. Most of the, our campers were khaki. That is a historically accurate color. Uh, they called it buff. You can wear a navy blue. You can wear gray. Uh, you could do white if you like. A lot of people did wear white pants back then simply because they were cheap. You had to pay for the dye. Shirts. So shirts are actually on here twice. Undershirts if you want to wear an undershirt. And then the plain white t-shirt, which would I would consider an undershirt as well. So the reason why we have those is, number one, for the boys, they can wear that back and forth to the showers. Because we are going to collect their clothing, their dirty clothes, on the way to the shower. And then once they're done from the shower, then we'll issue them clean clothes. Or well, clean shirt, rather. But having the white t-shirt will give them something to wear. Also, if we play capture the flag, while we're running through the woods, running through briars and thickets and whatnot, um, if the white t-shirt gets messed up or torn or ripped, you know, they're cheap and easily replaceable. So we do want them to bring white t-shirts. They do not need to bring 10, though. So 3 to 5 and then 3 to 5, you know, you don't need to bring it twice. Belts, that's really more of a optional thing. Not everybody wears belts, but belts are useful to help keep your pants from falling down. And if you do have a tomahawk, you can slip it in your waistband. For the ladies, if they so choose, they can bring a cardigan or some type of plain open front sweater. Again, we want it to be at least 50% cotton. Uh, it doesn't get terribly cold, but in the morning it is cool. So that is there for that. If the gentleman would like to wear something of that nature, they can as well. And then a bathrobe. So this is up here for the ladies so that they can wear the bathrobe to and from the shower because again, we'll be collecting clothing before showers and then issuing clothing after showers. So the bathrobe will give them something to wear. If the gentleman would like to wear a bathrobe, that is 100% fine bathrobes or just regular old robes were actually period correct and guys would have worn them uh, while lounging. And then of course, feminine underwear as needed. So that's what to pack, what to bring. 
and there's a lot of information we went over, so do make sure to come back and look over the information in your own time so you can read it.